In this video today we are going to discuss slow stitching. Hello, welcome to What is Wednesday. So today we're going to be talking about what is a slow stitch. You may hear that in some of the videos that have been going on um, lately and I just wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit just so you kind of have an understanding of what it is. I just learned about it myself. Um, slow stitching is basically a um, at craft school OZ is the one that defined it as using a needle and a thread to create art um, using textiles and that sort of thing um, the slow stitch movement started um, when in Italy after the slow food movement started there mm, let me back that up the slow food movement started in Italy which then brought about the slow stitch movement it's basically a meditative meditative way or a mindful way of um, stitching and creating art with your stitches this is um, I did this earlier this is basically a um, a tab that I'm gonna put in a junk journal you can see the stitches there oh, you can see the stitches there you can see the stitches there I stitched along there I stitched along there and then I added that so while my stuff may not be quite a slow stitch you kind of get the idea if you do Google slow stitch you'll get um, a wide variety of, of different um, stitching in, in projects and ways that um, people do this and this these are just not going to stay down are they I'm just trying to keep myself inside the frame at all times because I'm pretty awkward when I'm not so there we go all right so um, it's it was actually Mark Lipinski um, who was the one who brought this up with quilters he thought it would be great for quilters to you know um, be a little more mindful of how you stitch um, it's not it, it's Mm, sort of like embroidery but you don't have the tools you don't have the frame or anything you're just kind of being mindful slowly stitching watching what you're doing recognizing what you're doing and I hope that explained it it's not very well defined I'm not gonna lie it just really isn't so um, just so you know uh, it's like I said it's it's more of a meditative process for people and it's just basically looking to create some art all you need to do is know some stitches I don't know very many I know one <laughs> so um, we're just gonna go with that um, maybe in some other videos maybe I'll look up and figure out how to do some other ones but mostly I'm using this to make tags uh, tabs not tags tabs um, that I could put at the ends of the books so I did find this cool stitch before I started so we'll do that one real quick this is a bigger needle I probably shouldn't be using a needle this big let me go back to my purple thread we'll do this one instead there we go there we go I pre-threaded a bunch of needles just so that way I didn't have to stop and do them like in the middle um, while I'm trying to, to do this that's take the video the video would take forever so let's do a little bit more towards the edge um, I have to remember that I'm gonna also be sewing this so gotta be kind of careful of that as well and basically it's just stitching I also pulled out some beads uh, to add to some of this um, and I will show you how I do that in a minute too but let me show you this one stitch it's actually pretty cool um, I did it on here. I don't know if you can see that very well. Here. Little loopies. And I'll show you how I did it. It's a little different than using, um, not using wax thread. I'm so used to wax thread not uh, snarling up, so this is a little bit different for me. and as the uh, name kind of shows it is going to be a slow stitch 
so I do apologize um, I'm trying to keep it in the video I did want to get it closer so you could kind of see what I was doing instead of kind of trying to guess because I know sometimes when the camera is away from the viewer it's, it's or when it's farther up it's hard to see some of the details and stuff um, that's going on so I was trying to be mindful of that while I did this um, I hope that you guys all can see it pretty well and you know the slow stitch doesn't it doesn't really matter you can do whatever you want um, you can use whatever threads you want you can use whatever textiles you want um, you can add beads which is what I do I have a ton of these the only problem is is you gotta some of these are really too small and they don't have a beading needle which are actually different so the seed beads that I have you can usually string them onto um, a beading needle with uh, with thread and everything that's how they make those um, pretty dangle earrings um, but um, the problem like I said is that some of the needles if they're too big at the ends the the um, thread will not go through or the bead will not fit over everything and it's hard to get it through I did I was able to get it through some beads some of them I did double up the thread I'm just you know it just depends on how you feel or how comfortable you are don't forget if you are using glass beads they are glass and they may cut thread which is why I think um, if you look on these I doubled them up a little bit just to make sure so that's actually pretty doubled up again just to make sure so yes um, do watch the glass beads especially ones that have the sharp edges especially like things like the Swarovski crystals like these right here those will definitely you want to be ca more careful and probably double up the thread on those type of on those type of beads. Seed beads are probably not as bad unless they're like broken. Um, plastic beads, you're probably okay. So, and then you probably don't want to use too. Oh no 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 no! Why would I do that? Why why why? Uh, okay. All right, oops, sorry, let's keep this on here. Let me get the, okay, so I'm getting tangled up here. All right, down, okay. Give me a minute. Let me do this. Let me, yeah, I did that wrong, okay. So my other problem is I forget what I'm doing. I can't, I try to talk at the same time. Obviously, it doesn't work very well. So let's try this again. Where is my. All right, so um, I actually have a way to do this, and it's actually quite easy, but I'm now missing my. I use just. Oh, here we go. It's a bridge flosser. It's awful, I know, but whatever. It's not like it's used. I use this bridge flosser. Oops. Again, this is the reason why I did try to thread up some stuff because you don't want me trying to thread every single thread up some needles. You don't want to try me keep watching me try to thread needles. It's not very fun. So, come on, why aren't you why aren't you cooperating now? Come on, you cooperated earlier. We had absolutely no problem. Yep. And my husband's playing video games, so you can hear him. Oh my goodness, why is that not working now? Come on. I seriously, it I had no problem with this like two seconds ago. I don't know why. Where have it? Why is that having such a problem? All right, there we go. Sorry about that. I don't know. I hope I got most of that on camera for you. If I didn't, I do apologize. Uh, but it was, it was struggling. We were struggling. Okay, let's get back to sewing. Go. Let's put that down there so we don't get that. All right. So where was I talking about before I totally messed myself up? Oh, um, if you want to read a little bit more, there's a little bit of history and stuff. Um, I found a couple of websites. I will link them in my um, 
my uh, notes. Uh, like I said, there was the two, a needle pulling thread, which looks like they have some pretty interesting articles. And then there's the um, uh, needle, what was it? The other one was uh, Craft School OZ. So there was one, um, and I didn't understand. She kept saying that, you know, you do the slow stitch and you use a tool to make it harder. And I'm not really sure what she means by that. I'm not sure. Oh, I think I got it now. She means like you use a needle instead of a sewing machine. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. I couldn't figure that out for a minute. I was like, what kind of tool do you use? And why would you try to make it harder on yourself when you're just using a needle and thread? But now I fully understand. Oh, wow. That was it's a little blonde there. So, yes. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so it's using a needle. Um, and I think one of the big main differences between, like I said, uh, just regular all out embroidery and, um, the, uh, slow stitch is, um, the, I think the difference is, um, you're using a, a like a loom or something to kind of hold the a frame, those wooden circle frames where you see with the little knots at the top that kind of holds everything in place. Um, the two frames kind of keep the fabric taut. Taut? Taut. No, nope, you taunt someone, so it'd be taut. Taut. Tight. I keep, well, I'll just say tight because I don't know which word I'm trying to use. Um, it keeps the fabric tight, and that way you don't have to um, worry about, you know, see how I struggle a little bit trying to get the needle through, this, that, and the other thing. Um, but I think that's one of the bigger differences, so. And like I said, the lady was saying, you know, you, you slow stitch with a, with a tool, which would be the needle, so. I really hope this is in the video. Um, I'm really trying to stay in the video. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting because I have been hearing um, slow the term slow stitch kind of pop up a little bit in places. So I was just kind of wondering, you know, maybe some people didn't know what that was. I I had I kind of had a feeling it was not a not stitching with a sewing machine. It, again, it is like I said, it is a movement to kind of slow down, take some deep breaths, that sort of thing. It's the meditative um, sewing, they also call it. Um, so just keep that in the back of your mind. If you hear the other one or the other, that's kind of what it means. So This is great because it's like just a little bit different for your junk journals. If you want to use these in junk journals, you can, um, you know, there's a lot of places to get fabric. You don't have to just go to a fabric store and spend a lot of money. Um, if you are interested in, like, if you're looking for some more, like, prints and stuff, like, stuff like this, uh, you can go and you can find scraps of fabric on Amazon, and it'll come in a big bag, and some of you might get the salvage edge. I li actually like the salvage edge. It's, um, it's got this, like, little fuzzy piece to it, um, but you can get them pretty inexpensively on, uh, Amazon. You can also just get some uh, fat quarters on Amazon. I mean, you can do that. Um, you can go to um, Walmart and sells uh, fabric. Um, also, uh, Target does too. Um, a lot of fabric stores, if you go, they'll have like, they call them remnants. Sorry, little pieces of hair, fuzzies. They'll, um, they'll call them remnants in, um, like, so if they are cutting off yards and they have, a, like, a small piece left over, sometimes fabric stores will wrap those up. I've actually gotten some cute fabrics that way. Um, another place you can get it is, uh, well, I know my Goodwill, there's an area where they have just kind of fabric hanging. Just hanging on different hangers and stuff. Um, I have bought some uh, that way. So it, it is, you know, you can do it. Um... Another place to get fabric is your closet. Um, old sheets are great. Um, you can use different uh, different old clothes like um, that you 
you know, either you're no longer going to wear and they're no good or, you know, they've got rips in them or something, you know, kids clothing, t-shirts, you know, great. They've got some prints on them. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different places where you can get it. Uh, you can go uh, tag sailing and find, you know, like I said, some, sometimes you find those sheets and stuff. Those are great too because I use this color, I think. Yeah, I like that green. Um, you can use the, you know, different, you know, what was I, um, different types of, uh, you know, sheets, you know, pillowcases, all that sort of stuff. Um, there are some really, you know, like I said, interesting things that you can find in, uh, you know, different places. So keep that in mind, you know, you don't have to go to a fabric store and buy a really expensive fabric. You don't even have to go to Walmart or Wal or at Walgreens um, to buy it, Michaels or wherever else that might be that you might go. And I lost my thing again. Um, it's just it. It all depends, you know. It, it, like I said, Goodwill, our Goodwill. We've got we've the one that's on the street for me. It's got fabric. You can find scraps of fabric, pieces of fabric. Um, if you're a little concerned about bringing that stuff into your home, you can just bring it right in and put it in the washing machine. That works as well too. Um, you know, and if you didn't spend that much money, if something happens to it, you're okay with that. That's, you know, that's the whole point of that. So yeah. Um, and then again, of course, you know, your sheets, if you have sheets that are kind of like, say you get a hole in one of them, you can use them. And you know what you can do too? You can take on your fabric, you can use your stamps, um, your, uh, oh, what do you call it? Um, what do you call those stamps? Uh, any stamps, and then you can use a, a, as long as it's like a permanent ink, you can use that and you can make your own designs onto your fabrics. Get some little fabric markers. You can, you know, get really creative and do some very interesting things. So, um, don't think it's just, you know, oh, uh, you know, I, I need to buy fabric. I need to have special fabric or anything like that. Um, I have a lot of fabric because I thought I was going to be into quilting. And um, as fun as it is, it actually is. It's just, it takes forever. And um, I don't know. My passion really is making junk journals. I really do like doing it. I like working with paper. So um, even if people stop buying junk journals, I'll still make them and still give them to people. People are going to be like, mm, I have 50 of these now. Anyways, so that is something you can do. Oh, and you can also use distressed ink if you want to distress stuff like this up. You can. So this is one of the, this was that stitch I was telling you about, and I just wanted to kind of show it real quick. So just so you get an idea that, you know, you can do all sorts of interesting little things. Now I'm going to hold those tight, and you just go like this. Boop. And, uh, okay, if we do this right, we'll see some of the green and some of the blue. There we go. And since I started at the top, we're going to keep doing that all the way through. And because it's a little bit long, it's getting caught up in everything. I wanted to get everything down and around here so that way, um, you know, I didn't have to go looking for stuff. Um, did I do that right? Oh, that's good enough. Um, you know, while I was talking on the video. So that is why I have so much stuff right in front of me. And of course, I have all the small beads, which, you know, oops. Okay, let's do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tie these two off because I don't want to hold them anymore. Sorry, do that in the video. My apologies. I hope I'm in the video. It's going to be awful if I'm not. So this is a great way if you're just kind of like, mm, I don't know what to do and you got some extra you know, cloth scraps or stuff just kind of sitting around, you can just kind of be like, hmm, maybe I'll do this. 
And you know what? Maybe I'll just leave those. No, why not? I am trying to become a little more um, flexible and less rigid. Um, so I'm really working on that. Like I was like watching the stitches and I'm like, oh, if I stitch this on like, so it's, um, oops, fabric, fabric. Um, if I stitch this on and it's all crooked, I'm going to be upset. And I'm like, no, well, we'll just deal with it. It's, it'll, it'll give it character. That's my friend says. That's what makes stuff like this special is that it's, you know, you, there is flaws. It's supposed to be flawed. So, and as you can see, You can see it makes a very pretty, and I'll hold it up to the thing so you guys can see it a little bit better. Um, but it makes a really pretty design when you do that. And it's probably other things you can do too, I'm sure. I haven't, I mean, literally this is like first time I've been trying this. Um, I do want to try to make a patchwork cover for a journal at some point in my life, but um, i got a lot of things going on right now. So that will have to wait. And maybe I will have... Maybe I'll make one like this and kind of show it off and uh, do it on video. Who knows? Um, okay, so there we go. Ugh. Trying to keep my frame in here so I don't... Lose it. There we go. I'm just going to go down there. this off right here and I am going to tie it off this side I would like to finish this I don't even know how I can't see so to get it to go down close I had to actually lift it up and then do a, a smaller focus so I'm not really 100% sure like what how many minutes it's even been since I started so my apologies in advance you can hear all the little beads all over the place there. Okay, oh, and there's a piece of my hair. Sorry about that. Okay, so we did that. So this is just going to fold over like that. And I'm going to sew it down into a page probably with uh, sewing stuff, like, you know, needle and thread type stuff. So, but maybe I'll keep, maybe I'll do it like this and then I'll just sew over that and keep those out. I like that idea. That's a very good idea have them from time to time. So this is actually some uh, paint, some uh, fabric that my aunt actually hand dyed. Beautiful stuff. I made a journal for my cousin's daughter out of it, you know, just so, you know, kind of keep it in the family type stuff. That sounds weird. Um, but yeah, I thought she might like it, so that's what I did. I'll cover a little bit more. Now what I'll do is we will sew that on, just like that. We're going to use a clear thread this time. Not clear. Not clear. Wrong word. Okay, we're going to use a lighter thread. And, um, you know, they, uh, they, uh, the different websites that I saw was, um, you know, use different textiles, use different, you know, colors, use different uh, threads. Kind of give yourself a little bit of a range. So, um, because I'm in the salvage ed, salvage, 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 because I'm in the edge of the fabric, it's a little harder to sew through. That. I'm gonna just I'm just gonna do a I'm just gonna do a running stitch. I don't know if that's called a running stitch, straight stitch, is that what it's called? I'm not sure. Uh, I keep doing that. Okay. 
I'm gonna do like a straight, I think this is called a straight stitch. Do not quote me on that because I do not know. I'm actually really liking this. I understand the meditative purposes of it now. Um, it does feel very meditative. I hope I'm making sense. Oh, this would be a fun little video to do. I was going through my video lists and I saw what is Wednesday and I'm like, oh, I have not done one of those. Well, I've only done one. <laughs> of all my playlists, that's the one that probably has the least amount of, it does have the least amount of videos. It only has one. So yeah. So I thought, well, and I know I had been hearing that this come around a lot. So, and now that I'm back from my travels, I thought, you know what, it's a good time to get back and get some stuff done was able to get some bird journaling done so we did that as well I got that uploaded it's been crazy 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 so now it's the holidays the holidays are always 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 crazy so I don't know if anyone else feels that way sometimes with the holidays but man sometimes Sorry, I pulled that away. I'm trying to get that down. I am so sorry. I had to look and see. So that is the one thing, like, I'm trying to do this on video is I keep wanting to pull it closer to me so I can see it better. Again, I am blind as a bat. It's the one thing I, I do wish I had better. Oh, eBay. Please don't say I did that again. Did I do that again? Mm -hmm. All right. And this is what we're going to do. I'm going to get creative because I really do not. Oh, jeez, come on. Is that cut? Because I really do not feel like going through all of the hassle of trying to this done again. I'm going to do it this way. Those away from each other. Let's tie these off. So what I did was instead of re trying to pull out the needle and then re-threading the thread, I just decided that I wasn't going to do that and just cut it and we're going to tie it and that'll just be part of the design. So make it interesting. There we go my fingers work a little bit. I don't know why I have such a hard time tying stuff. Of course, it's not that easy. My fingers are you're probably like, oh, great. All I see is fingers. Um, probably not any easier than I'm doing it on a bed of uh, beads. That probably doesn't help at all. So, there we go. I'm going to leave that like that. I'll probably cut that off a little bit. Well, maybe I won't. Who knows? None of this back stuff is going to be seen because it's going to be folded over. It's 
put into a journal just like that. I am a mess right now. It's just not working. Okay. So I was able to go visit my parents. We went to New I went to New England with a friend of mine and we got to see um Sturbridge, Massachusetts and um Salem. Uh, a few other places. Um, we got to go see a lighthouse in Portland, Maine. It was beautiful. Um, one thing I'd probably do if I was back, if I did that, if I did, were to do it again, if we, were, if I were to have done the, the trip over again, I probably would not have gone. We went to the Salem Witch Museum. I, it wasn't overly. It, in my opinion, it was not my favorite place to go, and I just had. It, I mean, it was okay, but it just really wasn't my thing, so, um, not that, I, they, like, they did the witches trial, like, I got, you got to see a lot of the witches in the history, um, back in that area, area, which was kind of cool, I don't mind that at all, um, just the witches museum, it, I just wasn't impressed with it, so, um, there's a lot of threads here, what in the hell did I just do, Ugh. really, did I just do that, yeah, I did. Oh boy. And this is what happens when I talk. Alright, I guess we're going to have another. Another thread up there. Make sure some of these knots sometimes because okay so some of the knots you have to make sure are really tight because they will slip because the um if you rub it a little bit they'll slip because of the slickness of the thread if you rub it a little bit it'll kind of break up a little bit of the thread fab fibers and it will make it easier works really well with uh knitted stuff if knitted stuff starts coming undone you do that it's like a charm Kind of between your fingers a little bit. There you go. All right. See if I can finish this up without messing it up one more time. Let's see here. So. Sorry, my um, IT guy just walked in, so I just kind of signaled to him that I was, I was working, was doing this. So he's excited. He's got a new phone. He hadn't gotten a new one in a, in a little while, so he's very excited. And when I mean a little while, I mean like a couple years, not like past years. So, so he's a little bit excited about that. I think he wanted to show me. Ow! Don't stab yourself. That's very bad with needles. Just saying. Yeah, really watch yourself <laughs> and figure out why that wasn't going through. Hmm. Alright. Let's see here. I double up the thread just so you can see it a little better. This is a very thin quilting uh, cotton thread and um, it is a little harder to see. So I did double it up just kind of so you can kind of see it. That's not blood on my fingers. That is um, from a uh, paint um, marker that I used to kind of, uh, well, it's kind of a long story, but I keep losing my microphones and stuff. And I have two, and um, they look exactly the same, and they are pretty much exactly, they are the same, but they can't work together like the piece that goes into my phone can't work with the microphone so I have to mark it off and um, yeah 
so that's what I did. And um, I used red paint on one of them, and uh, red paint pen, red paint pen. So it's not blood, so I'm not bleeding all over this. Um, so if you see this in a journal, don't be grossed out. It's not blood. Not blood. So yeah, so um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna call it for this video. I I, I like the way this kind of turned out already, and I have um, again I'm I'm more simplistic in nature than I am anything else, um, and this seems like a pretty simple piece here. And again, I'm just making these um, as little tabs or tags to put on the edges of the papers, so that way. Um, you know, just give it a little bit of pizzazz. So yeah, so that's that will be a tag right there. Looks very stringy, but that's all right. It's the way it works. And we got the other side. So that's my video. That is slow stitching, or if you hear it, slow slow stitching, slow sewing, or meditative stitching, or meditative sewing. That's um, that's what's being talked about. That sort of uh, you know, creating some sort of art with your stitches. So thank you and I will see you in the next video. That's not sitting right. I have to make sure I get a good picture of that. All right. Thank you. Bye.